Hey guys, uh, long time, no video. Uh, this is maybe the longest break that I've taken from YouTube without any sort of planning around it. I think by the time you guys see this, it will have been um, a full month since there was any video out. So uh, thank you for being patient and uh, for sticking around and um, yeah, a number of you have reached out on social media, just checking in and, um, trying to see what's been going on and, um, why I've been MIA. Um, and yeah, so I thought I would chat about that a little bit in this video, just kind of a casual update. Um, before I dive into that, um, you can already see that I am busy painting here. Um, obviously I've recorded this voiceover at a different time than the footage that you're seeing right now, but, um, been a while since we had a, an old fashioned time lapse. So, um, thought it would be fun to do that. And that way you can watch me painting instead of listen, watch, watch my face <laughs> having lots of wondering expressions on it while you're listening to my voice do the same thing. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on. Um, what you see me painting here is, um, a collection of different thistles, five different thistles. And this was a self-initiated project. This is something I'm doing with my friend, Stephanie, who is a packaging designer. And she and I are making basically like a pretend product, a product that we um, have dreamed up together. And then she is doing the packaging design and I'm doing the illustration. And um, it's been super fun. I usually do self-initiated projects on my own, but I've been trying to get more in the habit of doing them with other people just because it I feel like it makes me more creative. And it's just, yeah, it's just really fun to do things working with your friends and, you know, being connected to actual humans. So um, I would definitely recommend that. And a fun thing that has been happening with this project that we're doing is that we've done it kind of backwards. So usually with packaging illustration, by the time I am brought in, the thing is like completely designed. Like there's the whole, the whole thing is done. Basically all they need is like the, the illustration to drop into these very like specific predefined containers. Occasionally I'll work with a client that's like a little bit more open or hasn't quite finished the design. But um, I would say 90% of the time for packaging work, mm -hmm. Um, by the time I get a brief, like included in the brief is the, the full on mock up and die line of the illustration or sorry, excuse me, of the packaging design. So in this one, we've done it backwards where we, you know, we came up with the product together and kind of brainstormed some, uh, ideas for the name. And then, um, you know, that gave the, the very broad direction. But, um, Stephanie decided, well, we decided together and <laughs> Stephanie was, um, gracious enough, flexible enough to let me just run with the illustration first, which is um, I, like I'm really enjoying that because I pretty much never get to have total flexibility with the illustration for a packaging assignment. So, yeah, I've just uh, completely kind of gone in my own direction on this. Well, not in my own direction. I consulted with Stephanie because it is a collaboration. But, um, yeah, getting to do the illustration first and the design second is um, so far really fun. So what you're seeing me make here is actually just part of the project. It's like there's two or three sets of illustrations that are going to go along with it because all of these are going to be part of a pattern. Um, and I've done some patterns before. Uh, I think basically like all the patterns I've made are up on my spoon flower currently. So it's never been a big focus for me. I, I did a few of them uh, a little while ago. It's a very feels like a very technical creative process. And so it's one that I don't necessarily gravitate towards all that much, but I wanted to try um, doing something that was pattern based for this because it's not something that I've done a ton of and I've never started out like made the illustrations from scratch with the intent of putting them into a pattern. Pretty much every time I've made a pattern, it's just been like looking at existing illustrations and kind of pulling some motifs from those existing illustrations and then being like, all right, let me plug these into a repeat. And that's that, that's the pattern. But I wanted to do something that was a lot more elaborate. Um, I don't think I'm going to show you the finished pattern at the end of this video, but it definitely will be out <laughs> on social media soon. Um, so yeah, you'll see this, which is just like the, the creation of one set of the assets or the motifs or whatever they're called. Um, and then there'll be another video where I make the other ones. Um, so these are thistles and then the other ones are also apples and carrots. 
And then maybe I'll make another video that talks about the pattern process, although I don't feel qualified to do that because um, I, it was just like such a hot mess. I mean, it's all done now. I've made the pattern, but I it's clearly not something I have a lot of experience with because I just like banged out these illustrations had fun doing it and felt pretty good the whole time. And even though I had planned them to go into a pattern, when I got down to like actually making the pattern I had planned, nothing went to plan. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe there'll be a, bit, a video about that um, or maybe there won't. <laughs> but uh, This is what we have right now. So I'm working in watercolor as usual and um, also colored pencil. And then there'll be some acrylic gouache or sorry, not acrylic gouache, uh, acrylic ink as well, which is a new addition for me. Uh, I wanted something that would be opaque and acrylic based. Um, but not be like so he like gouache is like really, really heavy bodied. So I feel like it has to it's a very different approach. You have to use a different different brushes. And for me, it just it, yeah, it feels it feels different working with gouache than it does with a really liquidy media. So I just wanted to try something really liquidy. And um, if you watch this channel, you know, I've been obsessed with the Hydrus, um, the PH Martins Hydrus watercolor for like a long time. So I got their version of acrylic ink. Uh, and I've really liked it so far. So you'll see me use that later in the video, um, just for some more opaque areas. And I am working harder than I usually do with this illustration at trying to stay pretty limited in terms of the color range and, and the palette. Usually, especially if I'm looking at real life um, references, which is 99% of the time, I take a lot of color cues from the reference and I'll kind of like maybe even push them to be a little bit more extreme. So something that's green ends up having like a ton of different colors in it. But in this case, since it was destined to be a pattern and there's going to be so many different elements, I really want to try to be a, like a little bit more minimal with um with the color palette. So I've kind of mixed up everything that I need for the green and everything that I need for um, for the purples, the kind of reddish purple color that I'm using for the thistle. And I've even been more, um, like way more organized than I usually am. Like typically if I mix up a color, I just am like kind of throwing in drops of this and drops of that until it looks the way that I want it to. But in this instance, I was like actually making formulas and counting how many drops I did and making sure that I could keep the color really consistent across uh, the whole range of illustrations. So I think that's about all I want to say about the process. And this could probably just be an entire video all on its own. So if you are just here for the art talk and you don't want to hear any of the updates and what's been going on with me, um, then you can go ahead and just mute or, you know, uh, put on some other music and just enjoy the end of the time lapse because now we are going to have a little bit of a chat. So, um, yeah, what I've been up to, um, mostly, mostly I've just been up to client work, although I have been better than uh better than usual i would say recently at trying to do personal work as well um i've within the last couple of months i've started talking to a couple of mentors which has been amazing uh and i decided to do that because i was mentoring a couple of other people and i was thinking like wow well my first thought was wow i would have loved to have done this when i was several steps back this would have been so helpful and then after a little while, I started thinking, like, who am I kidding? Like, this would still be helpful now. Like, I wish there's somebody that I could talk to. So um, I reached out to some people and got a number of no's. <laughs> and then finally, a couple people who I really admire and respect um, were, were willing to talk with me. So I've been talking with them. And that has been great. Um, and one of the things that has come out of those conversations was an emphasis uh, or suggestion for me to make time for self-initiated, make time for personal work. And it used to be something that would like happen really naturally. Like I would, um, you know, have um, work for a client and then I would have personal work for a few weeks, then work for a client and it would just kind of go back and forth. And it never really felt like something that I had to plan for or schedule around or make sure to do, but it's just happened less and less the past couple of years. And then like even last year, looking back, like I, I realized at the end of 2020 that I really, you know, I had started a couple other personal pieces, but I hadn't finished a personal piece since like March of 2020. And that was, uh, and when I say personal piece, all I mean is self-initiated. I don't mean something like deeply personal, um, just like a self-initiated piece, something that wasn't initiated by a client. And, um, yeah, that, that was a like pretty new thing for me that had never happened before. 
And I couldn't really see, you know, scheduling in time for personal work and then like telling a client, no, I can't take this on because I have, you know, this project, that project, and then I have two weeks scheduled for personal work. So you're going to have to wait, you know, six weeks to, to start this or whatever. Um, that was just never something I could imagine. But one of the um, mentors, one of my mentors said to me that I should just try to plan a little bit of time every day. Like when I first, very, very first get into the studio, um, plan time to work on the personal work. And if there was a, a self-initiated project that I was like super excited about, maybe to even if I had some other client work, maybe to just spend the day doing the self-initiated project instead, because if it's for a client, you know, at, at least for for this person and for me, <laughs> it's easier to stay up working, stay up late at night working on a client project. Um, you know, a couple of times a year than it is to um, make myself you know, draw at 930 at night on personal work. Like I used to do personal work at night um, back before I had kids. <laughs> but now, you know, I'm tired in the evening. So I have to have like a really good reason, a, a deadline, an actual deadline, if I'm going to motivate myself to do that. Um so, uh, you know, to, to draw after 9:30. So, yeah, the suggestion to like to to get in a little bit earlier if I could, and then to like make that the prime time, and then figure out how to fit the client stuff in around it. Um, I felt like that was really scary, but I've tried it for the last six weeks or so, or maybe eight weeks, and it's been really good, you guys. I've done a lot more personal work and. Um, it's challenging for me to like just do it for a couple of hours, like an hour or two, because all I want is to just sit down and get lost in it all day. So it is really hard if I have to just start on it and then switch gears to client work. But I've realized, you know, even if I do maybe take an odd day here or there to finish a personal project and then kind of pay the piper later with with staying up late to finish client work, that is by no means something that can be done all the time. Um, so, uh, I've had to just kind of accept the fact that if I want to keep doing self-initiated work and portfolio projects and keep pushing myself in a particular direction, I'm going to have to like do it little bit by little bit, which is really helpful because it, I feel like it has put me back in touch with like what it's like to get started in the very beginning when you don't have these big uninterrupted chunks of time, like you just have little bits of time. So, um, I'm right back, uh, in that spot once again. And, um, yeah, overall it's good. And that's been like a really positive thing. And, um, and yeah, client work has been going well. Um, I mean, overall, I would say work is, is pretty good. And, um, another, uh, fun random thing, which we will definitely make a video about sometime soon is that I have been finally, finally like getting really settled into the studio and getting things the way that I want them. I went and got two new Ikea desks. <laughs> Very exciting that after all this time, um, you know, more than 10 years later, I, uh, have basically just wanted to buy the exact same desks that I had back in college because there doesn't seem to be anything better on the market. So, um, yeah, set up a couple of new Ikea desks and now I have like big L shaped mega desk in the studio and I've been getting, um, more serious with my colored pencil organization and just kind of nerding out on all of that. So that's been another, um, fun and positive thing. And, um, yeah, I guess that, that in and of itself, like those things in and of themselves are kind of the reason why I have been like kind of MIA on social media and, you know, things are, are busy and good, um, at home with the kids and in my personal life. And, you know, I'm wanting to be really present when I'm with them and not wanting to like take out my phone or my camera. I just, I just want to be there with them, especially the older they get, the, the more they're aware if I'm like looking at Instagram or something. So I've been doing it really hardly ever or never on the weekends. Um, and that's the time that I used to do it some. And uh, and then client work has been busy and I've been getting really into this personal work and trying to prioritize that and making time for that. And I've just felt like if I'm if I'm very honest, like the only the only thing that I've been feeling really stressed about lately is social media. And um, of course, there have been stressful situations with clients. And, you know, even though things are good at home, like, yes, there are stressful days with the kids and like being a mom is challenging and all of that. Yes, yes, yes. But the thing that makes me like, makes my shoulders kind of hunch and just makes me feel like, ugh, like, you know, the air has been let out of me is social media and YouTube. And I've been trying to figure out why that is. And 
Um, I feel like we've had different conversations about this a few times over the last couple of years because it has just felt like, you know, at first I thought it was just burnout and, um, and maybe there was some element of burnout, but like it has just felt like less and less, I have felt less and less motivated to be making content. And, um, yeah, and I've gone through periods of like taking an intentional break and doing that. And that, that has been good. That has helped. But then the same feelings come back up as soon as I'm doing it again. And so this time I have tried to just be more accepting, I guess. And I, I honestly, I don't have any sort of a conclusion about this yet. I'm just kind of processing this with you guys and, um, and wanting to check in and, and be honest about where things are at. But, um, but I think in the, the time of reflection that I've spent on this, I've been thinking a lot about like why I started putting work online in the first place and why I started on YouTube in the first place and like what I'm trying to do with it now. Because I think part of the issue for me is that I feel I feel disconnected from like my my motivation, my why, like the reason why I'm doing any of it. And it's always pretty clear to me, like when I'm working on um, client work, like what the motivation is. <laughs> and when I'm working on self-initiated work, I'm like pretty motivated by that. But, um, back in the day, like when I first got started, um, when I was sick, like the reason I was putting things online was because I had no motivation. I, I didn't believe at all that I would be able to finish like a single piece, let alone a series of pieces. I had just ever since school, I had just started and quit, started and quit, started and quit, like worked on a piece for a while, threw it away. Like that was the pattern that I went through. So, you know, back in 2013, when I started drawing again and started posting on Tumblr, like it was just a, um, the reason I posted it on Tumblr was just to motivate myself. It was so that I could have a concrete reason to finish a piece because otherwise I would start a piece and I would get really picky about some part of it. And I would say that it sucked and then I would drop that and then just go back into my idea phase. Cause that was all I wanted to do back then was just think of ideas. And then as soon as I started trying to execute them, I, you know, they were never enough and, um, yeah. And then I would just quit. So, you know, I made this agreement with myself that I wasn't allowed to throw away a piece. <laughs> I, I had to finish it, whatever that meant. And I had to put it online, even if I felt kind of embarrassed by it. And it was how I kind of desensitized myself. Well, the to hmm, not desensitized. It was how I tackled <laughs> how I initially tackled some of my perfectionism. And I'm still struggling with that. I will always struggle with perfectionism. I think my whole life, but my perfectionism specifically related to like being able to finish artwork that uh, that was what got me over that initial hump. So my first motivation there was just to my first reason, my first why was purely just to motivate myself. And then I started on YouTube. Well, backtrack <laughs> after I motivated myself. And then, you know, after like a year or so, when I started getting inquiries from clients and I realized like, oh, wow, like, this is something that people actually really do for a living. And maybe I could do that too. And it was just this kind of gradual realization because I hadn't set out to do that. It wasn't the goal in the beginning. And so my goal then kind of shifted from purely self-motivation because I actually didn't need that so much anymore. Once I got really into the habit of drawing and painting and I truly fell in love with the process of it, I was super motivated. Like you couldn't keep me away. Like all I wanted to do was draw and paint. And that is still how I feel today. That was like a fire that was lit in me. And I just keep, yeah, that, that never feels like it goes out, um, for which I'm really grateful and hope maybe someday it will, or I'll struggle with that. But, you know, since then I have felt like a pretty constant motivation to paint. I love painting. Um, but in terms of posting online, the motivation then did become a little bit more strategic about like attracting clients. And so I was thinking about the kind of work that I was going to make and, um, and at that time, I also was growing, my platform was growing on Tumblr, and I had quite a big audience on there for the time. And um, I was getting tons of questions, like tons of art related questions, mostly about like, how do you use this kind of colored pencil? Or how do you do that? Like just very, very concrete, um, technical art type questions. And so the whole reason I went on YouTube was just to answer the questions was because I would get the same question over and over and over again from, you know, like 10 different 
17 year old girls, 15 year old girls who wanted to draw. Um, and I thought, well, if I just have a video out there kind of showing the process, then it'll be really easy to, um, to direct people to that. So that was what started YouTube. And so like the motivation there was just to answer other people's questions was just to help was to help other people. I never set out to like, you know, be a, a mega YouTuber or have YouTube be my job or like make a lot of money on YouTube. Like it just wasn't something that I thought of for that. It was, it was to answer people's questions and to connect with people and to help people. And, um, and I think I've had a harder time connecting to that motivation recently because it, it doesn't, ugh, all right, I'm, I'm going to get really real and specific, and I'm sure this is going to be kind of a turn off to some people. But if I look kind of over the years, um, my videos get fewer and fewer views and um, less and less engagement. And there is, is a big part of me like the I feel like the very human part of me that like wants people to like me that is like, OK, I need to figure out whatever I can so that my videos get like the most views and the most engagement and the most reach and all of that. Um, but that's really not why I came on the platform. <laughs> and so even when I've tried to do that in the past, like when I've tried to like when I did tons of vlogs, it, you know, a lot of that was because I noticed that people like vlogs and making vlogs was always pretty challenging for me emotionally because I'm such an introvert and that might surprise you given how chatty I am like once I get going but it always felt like really emotionally draining to make vlogs but I did it anyway because I thought like this is what this is what people want and it's such a fine line between like trying to make what people want and like doing something that actually feels authentic and um purposeful to me and I think part of the reason I get so um downtrodden feels like too strong of a word but like so just uh discouraged there we go discouraged by like low views and low numbers is that my my motivation with YouTube is actually still very much the same as it was when I got started unlike my initial motivation with Tumblr and, and online which changed over time still the the thing that I find the most motivated and the reason I continue on YouTube is because I do really like helping people and I do really vividly remember how it feels to be in the beginning and to feel alone and you're struggling to find information and you don't understand things and um yeah I I just I feel pretty passionately about like doing what I can to make sure nobody else has to feel that way. And I selfishly do enjoy. Yeah, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy sharing what I know. But then I don't know if you can guess where this is going. When I see that the numbers are like going down, going down, going down, what that tells me is it's not that helpful. <laughs> and like not that many people, maybe I'm not Maybe I've said what I have to say, you know, like maybe I've put it out there and that, and I need to like take a break for a while. I, and I'm not saying that that's what's happening. I'm just telling you guys very transparently kind of like what my thought process is and what I'm thinking about related to this. Um, so yeah, just seeing that, seeing the numbers trend down it, it, it and having my main motivation for being on YouTube to be just to help people. And, and I'm not saying that to be like, oh, I'm such a good person. I'm so altruistic. I mean, clearly I get something out of it. I get, I get something out of helping people. It feels really good to me. And most of what I do, um, and what I'm happy to do because of being such an introvert is really isolating, is really by myself. But, um, I've learned that even though it's not the most comfortable thing in the world for me, reaching out and trying to be connected to other people and especially like supporting other people is something that makes me feel happy and it makes me feel content and like a, like a member of the human race as opposed to, you know, just like a cog in the wheel of capitalism. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's been, I think it's tricky for me right now to, to feel like I'm doing something that is genuinely helpful that people that is making an impact on people. Um, and you know, if I could, if I could connect with that, I know I would be more motivated to do stuff, but you know, it's, it's tricky because, um, you know, the, yeah, the numbers, <laughs> it has trended downward and, 
Um, and then that makes me, yeah, just feel like it's, it's not, it's not hitting the right note. And, and I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want YouTube to be my job. YouTube is a fun thing that I do on the side and, um, a way that I connect with you guys. And I don't, um, my goal is not to like become a full-time YouTuber. Um, and I'm not, I am not at all, um, by saying that I'm not at all, downplaying or saying that that's a bad thing. Like, and if you watch this channel and that's your goal, like that is awesome. That's great. Like, but for me, like I'm pretty clear, like my goal, what I want is always going to be to draw and paint as much as possible. And, um, and maybe there's some people for whom like doing YouTube is the way that that happens. But, um, yeah, there are various reasons for me why, like sometimes the drawing and painting isn't always, um compatible with the youtubing um but yeah i'm i'm all i'm trying to say is i i'm not aiming to have you know millions of subscribers i am very happy with each of you here um i just want to know that what i'm putting out there is helping and and maybe and if it's if it's not like if i have if I have said what needs to be said for now, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with pausing for a while. And like, maybe I just put out periodic videos. Like when I specifically have something to say, um, I think what feels hard for me to like to maintain motivation through is feeling like I have to come up like with content. And, you know, I do ask you guys sometimes, and you're so great for like asking questions and sending me ideas and doing all that. But honestly, most of the stuff that gets asked anymore, I'm just referring people to existing videos. I'm like, yep, we've talked about that several times. Um, and I don't mind being asked again, like, that's totally fine. But I'm not going to like, you know, make a new video unless I actually have something new to say. And I don't know, maybe that's a mistake. And I'm sure there are people who do lots of content stuff and lots of YouTube stuff that are super experts at that, that would say, I should just, I should just make a new video saying the same thing. Um, I don't know. Um, I hope I'm not like offending anybody with any of this. Um, yeah, like I said, just trying to share honestly, <laughs> like I would, if we were, you know, having, um, having coffee and pie together. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where I've been at. And, um, I don't have, yeah, I don't have a, a concrete, like, this is the plan. This is what you can expect moving forward. I, I can say that there will of course be more videos and, um, and that's going to be something that I probably keep doing in some form or another indefinitely, but I'm just not sure about the, like the weekly format anymore. And, you know, maybe it will be like series of videos and, you know, like five to eight videos and then a break for a while. Um, I just have to think through what makes the most sense and what actually will, will reach the goal that I'm trying to reach because the goal that I'm trying to reach is not to have a million subscribers. The goal that I'm trying to reach is genuinely connecting with people and, and helping in a meaningful, impactful way, supporting, you know, in a meaningful, impactful way. So I need to think about like how, how to do that best, because that's, I, in order to do anything, I have to feel, I mean, I think that's probably universal. I have to feel motivated. I have to, I have to be very connected to the why and the meaning behind it. Otherwise it's just really hard for me to do something for an extended period of time. So, um, there will be more videos. <laughs> yeah, we'll just have to see kind of what that looks like. And I'm going to keep trying to be transparent with you guys about where things are at. I, I could have shared this sooner, but I was so just, in the experience myself. And even though I don't have a conclusion right now, I've already, I've done a lot more reflecting and kind of distilling. So I do feel a little bit more clear about it, even though this is clearly going to be a long video. So maybe it's not, um, maybe I'm not as clear as I thought. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, the point is I'm going to try to keep you guys in the loop, but sometimes I just can't update. I can't stay in the loop while I'm really in the midst of something while I'm really thinking through something. And that's just something I'm trying to accept about myself because, um, I am always going to have that introverted tendency where when things feel uncertain to me or, um, yeah, I'm not really sure about something. I tend to kind of drop into myself and, um, and need like quiet reflection and all of that. 
Um, so yeah, there will be more videos. We'll see what the format is. Um, I'm always open to ideas too. As you know, I say this all the time. So especially if you're somebody who watches a lot and somebody who has been helped, um, has felt like you found helpful content here, then, um, yeah, let, let me know what kind of stuff continues to be helpful for you going forward. If there are questions you feel like I haven't addressed or, um, things that, that do need to be talked about more. Um, I, I love hearing all of that, um, and, and super open to it. Um, I also will be, um, relaunching, uh, my online shop eventually. That's in, like a big project this year as well. Um, that's happening at the end of the month. So the goal is to have it relaunch on Memorial Day. So I will update you guys on that too. Um, that, uh, will, that update will go out in my newsletter. Um, so if you're not subscribed to that, go ahead and subscribe to make sure you get the update. And, um, yeah, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> if you somehow miraculously made it to the end of this video, um, what emoji should you put down below so that I know that you heard it? How about like, I don't know, how about a coconut? <laughs> <laughs> put a coconut emoji in the comments if you made it this far in this video and um and yeah if that's you thank you thank you for doing that and um if there's some weird innuendo with a coconut emoji that I don't know because I'm not like a super savvy person then don't put a coconut but <laughs> I yeah I gotta wind this up um before I go too off the rails here but yes thank you thank you for watching thank you for listening thank you for being here even though I have been all over the place this last well really this last couple of years but especially this um this last month or so um I appreciate you guys I appreciate you so much and this really this really genuinely is for you so let me know um let me know how to make it better and um, and what's meaningful for you. So um, thank you to Meg for doing the editing. Thank you to my friend Stephanie for making this project with me. Um, I will be sharing more about that on Instagram and, and hopefully have the other part of the time lapse for you guys uh, at some point soon. All right. I hope everybody's having a great week. I will see you. Well, I guess I haven't seen you in this video, but I will talk to you in the next video. All right. Bye.